Hello everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my mixed media art journal page for the Pick a Stick Challenge Facebook group which is brought to you by myself and Peg Robinson and we offer an art journaling challenge and a artist trading card challenge every month. This is the month of June 2018 and our our challenge is randomly drawn one word prompts. So you saw the graphic at the beginning of what the prompts will be for this month. The first prompt was mellow. And <laughs> yeah, remember these are randomly drawn. You know, they just, they, you don't know what you're going to get until you draw the sticks. And <laughs> I did not know what I was going to do with mellow. I just didn't know. But I thought about it for a while and that's the challenge right there. That right there is the challenge. You have to think about what that word means to you or what type of action you would get from that word. And a couple things came to me. Uh, some phrases came to me. One of them being mellow yellow, which I think is a drink and I think it's also in a song. Mellow yellow. Seems like there's a song that has that in there. Um, and I, I think there's a drink that tastes like Mountain Dew that is mellow yellow. And so that does, that gave me the idea of using yellow in combination with our prompts for color this month, which are fuchsia and wisteria, a bright pink and a pale violet. And so I thought I would throw in some mellow yellow along with that. Also, uh, I stopped at a pizza place on the way up north, I don't know, a few months ago, that's called Mellow Mushroom. And I, I think it's a chain store, but I'm not sure. But the that was the second thing that came to me. Mellow Mushroom. And I couldn't get that out of my head. Um, the graphics that they use in their sign and the decor inside and everything around is kind of this bohemian, psychedelic... Uh, you know, hippie um, type of a, of a vibe. And they have these swirly things on their sign, as well as this mushroom that, that looks very mellow. <laughs> it's just, it's, if you haven't been there, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you have, you do, you do. And it's just the way that this, you know, the way that this store is decorated. And something that I enjoy doing is doodling these shapes, these swirly shapes. Um, I, I doodle them along with, uh, I draw a lot of eyes and things like that when I'm talking on the phone or when I'm trying to do something. I can't, I can't, I can't just sit. I have to do something. So one of the things that I do is to just randomly doodle. And I thought that it would be kind of fun to start out my page, my first layer with just these these swirly, happy little doodles in the right colors. So I got out my Dr. P.H. Martin's um, concentrated fluid watercolors, and I just put uh, the purple, the, one of the pinks, one of the yellows, and one of the greens in this little palette. Um, get a couple drops. It has a dropper. It's like a dropper type fluid watercolor. Very intense color. And then I just spent some time doing these swirly doodles uh, using one of my higher quality, well, my high, very high quality expensive watercolor brush. Um, I mean, it's not that expensive, but it's the most expensive one I have. I keep it very nice and separate in its own little place so that I won't mess it up with acrylic. <laughs> <coughs> huh. So then once I was done with that and it was dry, I thought it was too bright uh, to go with the prompt mellow and to be a first layer. So I got out some white gesso and watered it down. And at first I was applying it with a old uh, hotel key card, um, just scraping it across, mellowing out the color, the bright color, and making it more of a first layer. I really wanted more pattern than I wanted crazy bright color that I wasn't going to be able to work with. And the, the credit card didn't give me as much coverage as I wanted. At first I thought I wanted a very, you know, very thin layer and that's the reason I used the card. But then I decided to go over it with another layer of the watered down gesso 
using my two inch soft rubber brayer and that gave me more of the look I wanted just kind of a real uh, interesting colorful but pale background so I got that um, that prompt plus the color prompts taken care of the second prompt was paste and I thought about using to making and using some paste paper which is a kind of a fun project but it's messy and it would take me all day and I just wanted to get this done so I decided to just go for modeling paste or molding paste some of the times it's called modeling paste sometimes it's called molding paste um, you know the stuff this is the light uh, molding paste from golden this is the one that I use most often sheerly for the reason that it dries quickly um, I don't have a lot of patience so I need it to dry quickly and I also knew I was going to be drying it with a heat tool because the third prompt was heat so this particular one when you dry it with a heat tool it get it puffs up and becomes kind of bumpy and just adds a little bit more fun to heating it with a heat tool so I use this swirly stencil which is one of the first stencils I ever bought and I got it at Michael's I think it's from Americana crafts or something like that it's it's a type I think their idea was it would get like use it on a wall or something and so I put the, the paste on heated it to dry it and then the next prompt was paint and I got out some spray paints these are marabou mixed media paint does it have mixed in it media art paint I think I don't know anyway they're sprays and they're made of acrylic so um, you can use them as one of your layers because once they're dry they're permanent because they are acrylic sprays you just need to take some care with the nozzles and make sure that you clean them and don't let them dry um, because then they're a pain in the booty um, as are a lot of the the spray inks or spray paints so I used the lavender and I think the other color is called flamingo maybe and just sprayed another layer and added water let it drip a little bit the next prompt was hexagon and I had this um, honeycomb type of a stencil this is a Heidi swap stencil and I decided to just add, bring in some more white back into the composition because I pretty much obliterated the white by all this other stuff that I did so I'm using titanium white acrylic paint and just um, stenciling with an uh, artist sponge across the page kind of in a a swoosh yeah it's a swoosh <laughs> and then with the excess paint that was um, on the palette I just watered it down and I did some splatters and some kind of like swirly highlights using my fan brush uh, fan brush is a fun tool if you don't have that one you should probably pick it up it's cheap and it's it makes some interesting like kind of very loose brush stroke looks when you use it as a paintbrush and it also makes great splatters so this number six prompt was glaze and I did not feel like glazing I just didn't feel like it so this is where one of the wild cards came in I used the wild card tear instead of prompt six which is glaze um, I got out some of my gel prints uh, deli paper and also one of them is a thin white just a thin white paper and I decided to do some collage because I just I really can't do many art journal pages without some sort of collage I just I like it so I'm just tearing up these little pieces of colors um, I think that most of the ones I used actually started out as a piece of 12 by 12 deli paper and has already been used a couple times and different pieces torn off it and so it's very appropriate for tear and I drew uh, um, a design on my page to collage over and I used a white Stabilo all pencil so that it wouldn't be so um, dark and I could still see the lines but I could go ahead and collage without making black lines but then I did end up adding black afterwards so yeah could have done it with black but whatever <laughs> and I'm just tearing the pieces and 
applying them to my design using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium and my glue brush, which is a beat up one inch flat brush that I use for glues and gesso and stuff that's going to make my brush stiff. Um, it's, it's had its day and so it's really great for this. And I'm just basically putting the, the gel medium right onto the paper and then putting the, the little pieces of deli paper into it and then going over the top to seal them in. So I'm creating a mushroom because couldn't get the mellow mushroom out of my head. <laughs> I didn't know what I really wanted to put on this page. I didn't have any ideas for what my main focal image was going to be. And so mushrooms seemed like a great idea. They're cute and they're fun and I could collage one right on there. And I could use the, the stenciled area as the stem. So that worked out pretty darn well. And this is where I'm using the Stabilo All Black pencil going over my lines um, and defining my shape a little bit better. Now you can see it when it was drawn in white, you couldn't really see it very well. So that is my mellow mushroom. <laughs> then for the, the rib area underneath, I painted it with some white acrylic that was still on my plate. And then I added um, a lavenderish color and a pinkish color and eventually a teal color of acrylic paint to my palette. And those will come in handy later. So I'm just trying to make those rib looking things under the mushroom. You know what I'm talking about. Fins or ribs or something. So then I decide I need to um, do a little bit more with the stem. So I get out some of that turquoise or teal paint that's already in the paint, the paper that I, I glued onto the mushroom. And I add it through the stencil going up to the edge of the lines because I needed to fill it out and also just add a little bit more interesting color. And I still had the pink and the lavender on my palette so I added a little bit of that in too and it makes the stem more interesting looking. So I took the tape off. Um, in this book I tape all the way around the edges of my page so that I because it's spiral bound and I can't take the papers out so I don't make a mess of what else is in this book already which is all pick a stick challenge and mission inspiration art journal pages. I don't want to mess up the one, other ones, so I tape it. And so I took that off, went back around again with my Stabilo All Pencil, which is a highly water reactive pencil. And I'm using a water tank brush to fluff out and activate that black and making it bleed out. And I think it, it looks pretty cool and it goes along with the sort of fuzzy psychedelic looking um, theme of my mushroom. Get back out my hexagon stencil again and add a few dots because a lot of toadstools or mushrooms have little dots on them. So I just used the acrylic white paint that was still on my plate. Went around that with the black Stabilo All pencil. All the materials that I'm using in this video I will link with um, Amazon links below the video so if there's something that you need like a water brush or a fan brush or a Stabilo pencil or something like that that you can use my links and when you do that it takes you right to the product and it also gives me a few cents um, to spend on the art supplies that I use in these free videos. So I still needed something on my page and I started to draw. You can see right down in the right hand side, I started to draw a figure reading a book. And then I was just like, I don't want to draw. I just don't feel like drawing today. You don't always have to draw. <laughs> so I went 
to my computer and printed out a little drawing uh, thing, little graphic clip art thing of a girl reading a book because I was thinking sitting under this mellow mushroom reading a book would make me feel really mellow because reading calms me down. At night when I'm trying to go to sleep, I can never go to sleep because my my brain will not s stop with its lists and its ideas and its whatever. And we got to do this and we do that. Da, da, da. And so I read at night and it mellows me out. I read every single night. And so I thought that that went along with my theme of this little mushroom and it just it needed something else on the page. So I glued that printed graphic down and at this point I should have zoomed in my camera I'm sorry that I didn't uh, it's so far away but um, I just I was in the zone I glued it down with <coughs> Liquitex matte gel medium again and then went over the top of it so that it would be sealed up and then I'm just using the paints that I already have out so I'm not getting anything else out I've got some of that teal color, I've got some lavender, I've got a little pink, some white, and then I still have these watercolors um, over on the left hand side that are still there. So I use a little bit of the yellow watercolor with the pink and the white and make a skin tone, a Caucasian skin tone. Um, I use the lavender and for the shirt and the teal for the pants. Um, this really dark purple color in the watercolor I use for the shoes and I think I use the pink watercolor for the book I think yeah I do and then as I'm doing that I'm also adding the white highlights with the white paint that's on my plate over the top just to give it a little bit more dimension um, so it's not so flat and then I use the yellow watercolor for her hair because I just didn't want to get out anything else. I just it was one of those days. It's like I'm just not gonna I'm gonna get out more stuff. Are you kidding me? I have enough stuff out already. <laughs> and I'm just uh, I give her a little bit of pink cheeks and lips with the watercolor. Then I get back out that Stabilo pencil, which is still there on the desk. And I do something when I do collage that is to put a shadow around whatever I glue on the page. Because if you don't, it just looks like you glued it on the page. And so I did the same Stabilo technique that I did around the mushroom, around the girl. And then now she blends into the page and she doesn't look like she's just stuck on there as an afterthought. Then I use my um, pit pen, illustration pen, to go back over the lines because when you use acrylic paint on something, it covers up the lines. So I redrew the illustration and this, this also changes the illustration a little bit and it makes it more your own because even though you're trying to go over the lines, they're, they're kind of obliterated and you end up making your own lines. So her face, facial expression changed a lot. Um, that's just how it goes. So altering that printed piece is a good idea because it's probably copyrighted. <laughs> so then all I did was to add the words, reading makes me mellow on top of the mushroom, which I did highlight with white and it's not on the video. If you've enjoyed this, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment, subscribe, turn on your notifications, share this if you want to. And also you can come over and join us at the Big Stick Challenge Facebook group. Bye-bye.